this is Talking Europe on France 24, where today we're asking whether Europe's democracy is broken, and if so, how it might be fixed. There have been outbursts of anger against the traditional political systems all around the continent. Think of the Gilets Jaunes or Yellow Vest protests in France, or perhaps the Brexit vote in the UK, which for many was a protest against the powers that be. Well, with trust in the traditional mainstream apparently at a low ebb, would more direct democracy be a better path? Joining us to discuss whether a political revolution is underway, a good idea, even achievable, two members of the European Parliament from Italy's Five Star Movement, which uses technology to develop policy ideas directly proposed by the electorate, Eleonora Evi. Thank you for being with us. Hello, good morning. And uh, from France's La République en Marche, the party of President Macron, which has so struggled to contain the Yellow Vest movement, MEP Jean Artuis, hello. Hello, good morning. So uh, I'd like to talk first about just the general uh, issues here. According to the recent Eurobarometer survey, a Europe-wide survey carried out by the Commission, only 42% of European voters said that they had faith in the EU itself as an institution. Is this a failure, Jean Artuis? Democracy is in crisis in the uh, Occidental world. Over two centuries, each generation was convinced that uh, tomorrow would be better than today, and that would be the same for the children. But uh, the globalization has uh, suddenly, uh, uh, has suddenly uh, marked its effect in, by the end of the years 90, mm -hmm. and uh, something had changed. The standard of living has decreased for many people because we imported many, many products from worldwide at cheaper costs. But unfortunately, many people were out of the work, unemployed, and they are questioning about their future. What would be the future? And this has created the crisis. And uh, we have to, 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 to develop a new project for the future to convince everybody that there is a future for everybody. But if we talk about globalization, uh, globalization, a phenomenon, of course, but uh, politicians have been in charge in, in countries such as France, uh, European countries, while globalization was happening. Surely the politicians who were elected have mismanaged globalization then, from, from what you're telling me? Yes, certainly. Because uh, we, we, uh, until the end of uh, the 19th century, Europe was uh, in power in the world. And something had changed. Mm. We are now in globalization, and we have to reconsider. Every country in the European Union considered that it is a world power. Unfortunately, we have to, to identify the European common goods. Mm. And I am sure that some of them are no longer under control at national level. And we have to transfer those uh, European common goods from the national level to the European level. Eleonora Evi, more Europe is the answer? Well, probably we have been uh, facing a Europe that has not been communicated in the good, in the good way, in a, in a positive way, because Europe has help, uh, helped us in many ways so far. Think about the environment on, uh, on protection for our health. But there are too many issues and too many problems that, that still are unresolved and that we should tackle. The rise of poverty and unemployment is one of the, uh, I mean, clear um, results of the missing Europe today. So I believe that this Europe should be very much transformed because too many of the decisions are taken, for example, behind closed doors. Think about the Council still work behind closed doors, while we here in the European Parliament Mostly of the time we have transparent debates, uh, amendments are public, so there's the entire system of the uh, work uh, of the Europe and how decision, the decision-making process is, um, is uh, managed has to, be has to be changed. Well, in, in terms of that management and transformation that you're talking about, Five Star Movement, your party, uh, had the biggest single vote share in the 2018 Italian elections. 
and has this different model of policy making that we were talking about in fact politicians coming from all walks of life however there have been accusations against the five star movement of sort of amateurish uh, political management uh, protests for example in some five star governed cities like rome against the five star mayor well democracy is a wonderful thing uh, that has to be in my opinion enhanced and using direct democracy tools is today the future not believing and not uh, working on that would be uh, anachronistic in my opinion because direct democracy is there to help representative democracy otherwise politicians would behave not in probably and as we experienced in the past and not really pursuing the common goods and public interest and we have seen many of these um, uh, in, in many occasions this has happened therefore i strongly believe that we have to enlarge and reinforce uh, the uh, tools for direct democracy and so it's perhaps just the beginning for you well let's um go to a report now uh, concerning jean Artuis, uh, home country france uh, where there has been this great national debate which has come out of the yellow vest movement i mentioned before uh, haxi myers belkin has prepared this uh, look back for us on the whole process Moi, je prends un engagement solennel devant vous, c'est que moi, j'en tirerai des conséquences véritables. Hot on the heels of France's great national debate, the French president is vowing to talk policy. But how did we get here? Back in November, public outrage at a planned tax hike on fuel exploded onto the streets in the form of the Yellow Vest protest movement. Weekly demonstrations across the country quickly gave voice to more general frustrations with the rising cost of living, and a perceived disconnect between the ruling elite and working people. Public support for the Gilets Jaunes eventually forced President Macron into making some significant concessions, among them a 100 euro increase to the national minimum wage and the unveiling of the great national debate, billed as a chance for French citizens to have the ear of their president. Over the course of two months, some 10,000 town hall meetings took place across the country. A further two million contributions were made online. Macron himself racked up almost 100 hours of in-person appearances. The government promises this unprecedented national consultation will result in profound change. But critics dismiss it as a cynical attempt to improve Macron's approval ratings. If we've gotten to the point where we need this big debate, it's proof that our institutions aren't working. And their numbers may be dwindling, but Yellow Vests agree. What was this great debate for? It was just smoke. It was a campaign for the European elections in disguise. The Yellow Vest protests have been the greatest challenge to Macron's presidency yet. Will his post-debate conclusions be enough to convince the people he's listened? Jean Arthur, uh, speaking about the Gilets Jaunes, uh, these protesters, they did get some concessions out of Emmanuel Macron. They got him to go around the country to all these different places. Very unusual for a president to do that. Uh, doesn't that prove, perhaps, that taking your anger to the streets is more effective than writing a letter to your member of parliament or, or the traditional methods? Yes, but we have to... We have to consider this, uh, this revolt of uh, yellow vests. Uh, some people are unsatisfied. They are questioning about their future. So we, we, we have to answer their requirements. Most of the requirements, a large portion of requirements, the answers will be European, considering uh, climate, considering uh, uh, security, considering uh, uh, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. the, the proper level to, to answer such uh, requirements, the proper level is European. So, but is, is Europe distant from the people? I think, you know, when we look at that uh, Eurobarometer survey, 42% of voters saying they had faith in the EU as an institution. It seems for many people, they prefer to go on the streets and protest than to access the European politicians as, as you're proposing. We, are, we have to change the management uh, of uh, European Union. More direct contact between MEPs such as yourselves? The European Union doesn't speak to European citizens. 
We, are, we have no clear message for European citizens. And uh, what we have to promote, we have to promote a European Union to prepare the future of uh, every generation, every European citizens, and to protect them. We have to change uh, most of the, of the criteria we applied in Europe until now. Mm. Europe is just uh, economical and financial. We have to promote a, the, the, the social pillar in Europe and to convince everybody that every citizen has a, have a right place in the European Union. Eleonore, Evi. Well, I have to say that I agree because it seems that it is like something has gone in the wrong way along the journey because the, 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 the initial spirit of this common house, which is Europe, was exactly to, to, to create benefits and to create well-being for every citizen, for the, for, for the different people from Europe. Something has been missed in, on the journey, as I said. Uh, austerity policies, for example, and uh, uh, this uh, unbalanced way of creating these house as uh, it is the European Union uh, led us to a situation where the European institutions are perceived as very far and distant from European citizens. We have to uh, work on that and we have to, uh, to get it closer to, to our daily life. And just wondering about uh, what you think about uh, the influence of national politicians, yourselves being MEPs, uh, for example with the Five Star Movement uh, and its alliance with the, the Lega, there have been some quite significant policy shifts and the attitude towards Europe within Italy uh, has changed quite a lot. There was the big clash with the Commission over the budget. Uh, it's, it doesn't seem clear whether the Five Star Movement, for example, is pro-European or not when we look at the national level compared to the European level. Because as you said, it's more complicated than saying only pro or against Europe. It's, the reality is very much more complex than it is sometimes presented. Uh, we believe uh, in Europe uh, as our common house, as I said, but still there are so many things that we have to change. For example, the fight we had on the budget, uh, yes, of course, it has been a, quite a, a difficult situation, but in, at the end of the day, we are, we are trying to do our best uh, to respect the rules, the European laws, mm. but at the same time, we have to deliver and we have to, for example, introduce one of the measures, which is our core measures, the... Uh, uh, you, the you admit that we, we shared a sovereignty <laughs> when we accepted to have a, 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 a common uh, currency, the euro, the single currency. And when we share such a sovereignty, we have to coordinate our budgetary policy, our economical policy, uh, we, we have to agree uh, that it is a, a, a common destiny and uh, to accept uh, the, the, the disequilibrium, the deficit, is not a policy. We have yeah. to balance a budget. But you know better than me that sometimes the rules have been applied for someone and interpreted for someone else. So I guess also that this mm. Europe has I, to, I be, <laughs> to be yeah, I agree. managed the, in a the, different way, a more balanced way. The governance of Eurozone <laughs> was a mutual, uh, mutual uh, complaisance okay. between the ministers of finance. Mm. We have to change that. And we have to, to implement uh, a new approach for the, budget, for, for the Eurozone governance with mm -hmm. uh, a budget, uh, with uh, a minister of finance, of uh, budgetary affairs, and I think that'll be another argument, perhaps, or debate for the future. Now, we haven't got much time left in the programme. I just wanted to bring in our regular facts check segment because uh, we've, we've got a story that comes out of uh, some citizen democracy, a citizen consultation in Europe, but hasn't gone down very well in some parts of uh, European media. So this is this week's Fact or Fake. Well, this time we're asking, uh, is the EU trying to put the entire continent on, quote, Berlin time? That's the colourful claim from British tabloid The Daily Express on March 26 of this year. Now, this article claims that members of the European Parliament have voted to, quote, advance plans to shift to Berlin time 
in 2021. So what's the truth? Well, the root of the article is correct. MEPs did vote on March 26 in favour of ending the seasonal clock-changing tradition, otherwise known as daylight saving, as of March 2021. Now, they were supporting a proposal made by the European Commission, which itself stemmed from a public consultation. 4.6 million Europeans responded to a survey of which 84% were in favour of the change. So it is true that time is being tinkered with, but what about the details? What is Berlin time? Well, the Daily Express does not explain in its article where the term Berlin time has come from. Indeed, Berlin shares its own Central European time with 30 other European states and two in North Africa that use CET all year round. So the article may as well have called it Paris time, Sarajevo time, or even perhaps Tunis time. In any case, no specific time zone is being imposed under the proposal. It would be up to each member state to decide which time arrangement they wish to keep their current summer or winter time for their particular zone. So uh, that's it for this week's debate. I'd like to once again to thank my guests, Jean Artuy and Eleonora Evi. Thank you both very much for being with us. Thank you so much. Have a nice and, day. and thanks to you as well for watching. Remember, you can catch up on our shows on our website, france24.com. That's it for now, though. See you next time. Live from Paris, a debate on the big story of the day with experts, newsmakers and observers. Lots of reactions. Continue the debate after the show is over by sharing your views on our forums. The debate, hosted by Francois Picard on France24 and France24.com.